The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. If you happen to be in the market for a premium sander, you're probably considering these two, the Festool ETS EC150 and the Merca Deros. Both are absolutely fantastic sanders, but the Merca is about $125 more. The Festool is already pretty darn expensive to begin with, so is it worth it to pay a little bit more for the Merca? Well, let's find out. So before we get started, let's get some business out of the way. First of all, you should know that I've been using a Festool sander for over 10 years now, and it's really hard to review other sanders without having some bias toward the tool that you've been using for over a decade, right? So what I did was stopped using the Festool and exclusively used the Merca for about three months. Uh, and this is why the review was actually delayed. A lot of people expected this review sooner, but how can I review a sander that I just got and haven't really used very much? So I did use it exclusively for the last three three months to try to remove any bias. Now I also want to set your expectations correctly here. Uh, this is not going to be one of those pseudo-scientific magazine style reviews. Instead, this is me sharing my opinion with my observations on both of these sanders. And hopefully you'll find it useful. And finally, you should know that both of these sanders were purchased with my own money. Neither of them are sponsored. And I think now we can jump into the spec comparison between the two sanders. The two specific models we're looking at are the Mercaderos and the Festool ETS EC150. Both are 6 inch diameter and both have the same 5 mm oscillation pattern. By the way, oscillation simply refers to the diameter of the scratch pattern. A bigger number means it's more aggressive and a lower number means that it's a finer finish. So how about the oscillation options? Merca makes a 2.5 mm and a 5 mm and Festool makes a 3 mm and 5 mm. So how much do these sanders cost? As of 2021, the Merca retails for $650. The Festool is $525. The variable speed RPM range is 4,000 to 10,000 on the Merca and 6,000 to 10,000 on the Festool. The Merca has a rubber covered button at the back that serves as a master power, but won't actually start spinning until the paddle is depressed. The Festool has a plastic power button at the front. The Merca's paddle also serves as a variable speed control, and it has additional maximum speed control buttons back near the power button. The Festool's variable speed is controlled by a more traditional dial. The Merca comes in at 2.29 pounds, and the Festool is a little bit heavier at 2.74 pounds, according to my scale. For the height, the Merca is just a little bit shorter than the Festool by about 5 eighths of an inch, giving it a lower center of gravity. Both sanders interface just fine with all of my Festool hoses, but your mileage may vary if you have a different hose brand. Both sanders have a proprietary power cord, with the Merca being just a little bit bulkier than a Festool. Both sanders have a ridiculous hole pattern, which supposedly improves dust collection and efficiency. But from my experience, a simple, traditional 8-hole pattern is absolutely adequate for dust collection, so can we all agree to just stop with this madness? These papers are starting to be more whole than sandpaper. Hello! So how about warranty? Merca offers two years with one additional year upon registration. The warranty covers defects in material and workmanship, but not wear and tear. Festool offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, plus three years all-inclusive, and that does include wear and tear. This is not an insubstantial thing to consider. So now that we have the spec comparison out of the way, let's get into the subjective stuff. Now, I came from a Festool sander, right? So this is what I'm used to. When I grabbed the Merca, uh, my initial reaction was that, wow, this thing is actually really comfortable. It's a very ergonomic sander. That's not to say that the Festool is a slouch in that department. The Festool sander is also very comfortable, very ergonomic. But there was something different about the Merca. And I'm not 100% sure what it is, but I think it's a combination of the lower height, giving you a lower center of gravity. It's also just a little bit lighter. So it tends to feel like more of a natural extension of your hand, which is something that's great when you're working with tools. The fact that it's lighter actually helped out quite a bit. I had to refinish my front door recently and I did it while it was still on the hinges, which means I had a whole lot of sanding like this. And even if it's just a half pound, you know, maybe a little bit less than that difference between these, um, that's a lot of, you know, a lot less weight and wear and tear on your arm and your hand for a long sanding session. You're going to be thankful for having less weight there. Now, given that, you might think that the Merca is the undisputed champ in the way of ergonomics. It's good, but there's a catch. Now, if you're used to this paddle thing, 
you're gonna love it, right? That's your, that's your deal, <laughs> that's what you're into. For me, I'm not used to it. I find this paddle to be a bit of a liability. I don't really enjoy it. Part of the reason, and this goes back to the ergonomics, is the fact that you kind of have to keep your hand like in this position, or you know maybe you can hold it like this with your finger depressing the paddle, um, but you have to keep that paddle down. When I'm sanding for long periods of time, whether it's overhead, flat, whatever, if it's a long sanding session, I often like to vary my grip. And that means I might grab it back here, I might grab it this way, I might grab it this way, because I just want to reduce fatigue in my hand. When there's a paddle here that needs to be depressed all the time, it's a lot harder to do that, right? So I actually found for long sanding sessions, while this, ergonomically speaking, for the most part is better, I actually found it to be less comfortable. I found my hand wanting to cramp up a little bit more because I felt inclined to keep it in that same position the entire time. Uh, there are also other liability issues that I find with this paddle. Now the paddle does operate as something of an on-off switch, and you have to have the master power on in order for the paddle to work. But the problem comes in when it comes time to change paper. You're gonna to have to develop a different habit with this sander because a lot of people, including myself, will often turn a sander over to change the paper. And if you still have power to it, the paddle gets depressed and now this thing is spinning like crazy. So you need to turn the power off, then you can flip it upside down. Uh, the other thing is if you forget to turn the power off and you set the sander down because you're done with it uh, and either something falls on it, you forget that it's powered up and you push that paddle down, or uh, somebody else comes in the shop and does something to it, it could just take a walk on you. So it is important to always turn that master power off. It's just not something most of us are used to. So if you're, you dig this paddle feature, that's great. Uh, for me personally, I just find it to be a little bit more trouble than it's worth. Um, and the other thing is, you know, when I think about my habits in the shop, most of the time I'm running at full speed with my sanders. I can't remember more than maybe one or two times that I've dialed this down. It just doesn't happen very often. So all of this variability and having the paddle actually give you a little bit of variable speed is kind of lost on me. The other thing about the paddle and that variable speed is it's kind of difficult to control. You don't really get motion until you're maybe more than halfway down, right? Actually more than that. Okay, now we're starting to get a little bit of motion here. And the amount of space you have is maybe a quarter inch more of travel that you can then vary the speed. So if you do have a need to change the speed on the fly, you're gonna find that difficult to do, especially because you're kind of doing it with your hand pressure like this. So if, I would just prefer a regular simple on off button, but it is what it is. Now, speaking of changing paper, there's something I wanted to point out. Took a little getting used to when I was trying to change the paper and, and I don't often put it down on the bench like I showed you. I actually tend to tuck it into my stomach here and I will try to line up the holes this way. Now the Merca has a pad that kind of spins, well I won't say it spins freely, but it is a lot looser and has more range of motion than a Festool. The Festool hardly moves at all. So when trying to line up all these stupid holes on the pad, it's a whole lot easier to do it if the pad isn't moving. So again, totally nitpicky thing, but it's something that I appreciate a little bit more about the Festool. Now one other thing regarding the pad on the Merca is that it takes longer to spin down. Um, I really like a tool that stops as soon as possible after I turn it off. And the Festool pretty much stops dead, but the Merca takes a while. Let me actually show you here. I'm gonna bring them both up to full speed and turn them off at the same time. So as you can see, the Festool stops dead. Uh, the Merca has a little jerk and then it stops eventually. It probably takes a few seconds to come to a complete stop. So something to consider. One thing I heard consistently, especially from converts who went from Festool to Merca, is that the Merca sands a lot faster. I have to say, after using it for three months, after doing uh, a lot of side-by-side -side tests, um, things I didn't necessarily film, uh, but I was keeping it in mind the whole time, I didn't see any evidence of that at all. Uh, in fact, one thing I did wind up filming is when I was sanding some Western Red Cedar bench tops. Uh, I put pencil lines on there and I just counted how many passes it would take back and forth for me to get all of those pencil marks off the surface and they were exactly the same. And then again, using this thing for three months, if there were a speed increase, being so used to the Festool, you would think I would see it. Right? And my assistant, John, who also had a lot of time on this sander, um, I talked to him before I filmed this video, and he agrees with me that he didn't notice any speed increases either. Um, so again, just my personal experience, but everyone who says that they sand faster, I don't know what you're talking about, sands exactly the same in my hands. 
Now, one weird thing that I noticed, I wasn't even looking for this, but when we were sanding those Western Red Cedar tops, I noticed that the Merca wanted to jump every time we hit one of the knots. So Western Red Cedar is a very soft species of wood. So as you move from the soft area to a dense knot area, a lot of times that can cause a sander to jump a little bit. And that's what happened with the Merca. It would go over the knot and just kind of jerk a little bit in your hands. Anytime a sander jerks, that means that you're gonna have squiggly lines uh, and deep cut lines in the surface and that's no bueno. The interesting thing was when doing that same board with the Festool, we did not feel that jump. And if we did, it was so, so slight. It seemed like the Festool was able to handle that unevenness in the surface with more grace. Now, if it's because of the, you know, something in the sander itself, or simply the fact that it's a little bit heavier, something about it allowed it to handle those density changes with a little bit more grace. Now, something a lot of people are concerned about is overall vibration. And one of the things you get when you jump to a premium sander is less vibration. Uh, I know in the past, I used to have a small DeWalt sander. On long sanding jobs, when I was done, my hand would just be kind of tingly and itchy. It doesn't really happen with sanders like this. I mean, it still can over long periods, but you want as little vibration as possible. And to me, at least from my observations, these are absolutely equal. They're both fantastic, and they're both a, a huge jump over typical store brand sanders. Uh, now, let's jump into something that I would consider secondary, but it's the accessories. What else is available uh, with these brands? Both companies offer a variety of pad options, dust extractors, and sandpaper. Merca has the advantage in sandpaper just by the sheer volume of options. That said, good luck making sense of them. The Merca sandpaper page reminds me of the Cheesecake Factory menu. I just can't figure out what I want, so I'll just get the cheesecake. This is further exacerbated by the goofy, nondescriptive names like Abrilon, Jepuflex, and Merlon which all sound like really cool wizards from Lord of the Rings. Festool offers a smaller and simpler selection of abrasives that the average woodworker can wrap their head around, but they also feature goofy nondescriptive names like Granite. Granite? No, Granet. Rubin. Rubo? Rubin. Rubio. Rubin! But one area Festool holds a huge advantage is the number of other tools that they produce. There are obvious advantages to having a bunch of tools from the same brand, and if you go Merca, you're pretty much limited to sanders and polishers. If you go Festool, you have access to things like saws, routers, planers, drills, and of course, that domino thing. So that's something to keep in mind, depending on what you want to do in the future with your tool purchases. So who might choose the Merca over the Festool? Well, first, people who have experience with pneumatic tools. If you've used the pneumatic sander in the past and you like that, uh, this form factor is going to be very familiar to you. People who do a lot of vertical work. Uh, when I used this vertically, I was happy for the lighter weight. I'm not totally thrilled about the paddle, but I do think the lighter weight, if you're doing overhead and vertical work, you're going to find the Merca to be much more fun to use. How about gadget geeks? Believe it or not, the Merca has an app. Now, I actually didn't use the app, but from what I understand, it can give you speed information about the sander. It can also tell you how much exposure you've had to vibration. So that's kind of interesting. It's not something I have much use for, but it's there. How about people? who have an anger boner against Festool. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who would gladly pay $125 more for the Merca just to stick it to Festool lovers. So who would be interested in the Festool over the Merca? Well, first I would say people who want that system approach, right? If you are planning on adding more tools to your arsenal and you kind of want them all to play together in a cohesive way, uh, Festool is going to have the advantage there because they make those other tools. And once you're in the Festool environment, it just kind of makes sense. If you need a tool that they sell, that type of tool, it makes sense to buy it from them. So if that's what you're into, um, Festool is going to give you that. You're not going to be able to do that uh, with the Merca lineup. I would also say people who do mostly flat sanding. I would say that's actually me. In the shop, most of the time, I'm sanding flat. So the fact that the Merca is a little bit lighter doesn't really impact my work very often. And from that one experience that I had with that little bit of jumping, it seems like perhaps the extra weight in the Festool can work to your advantage by stabilizing the sander a little bit. I don't know for sure. I'm kind of speculating there, but that was my conclusion. And finally, you know, people who want to save $125. That's not chump change. And that's really the sticking point here, isn't it? The $125 difference. Festool is already considered to be a premium sander with a premium price tag. So when you say another comparable sander is $125 more, you better show me features and benefits that warrant that extra $125. 
And I gotta say, with all of the comparisons and the amount of time that I've spent with this sander, I don't see it. I just don't see where there's $125 more sander here. All the differences we pointed out, it's all nitpicky stuff. I mean, these sanders are more alike than they are different. And all that little nitpicky stuff doesn't mean much to me. So if I had to choose, I would go with the one that's just as good and saves me 125 bucks. Now, if you watch this video and some of those things I pointed out mean more to you than they do to me, that might sway your opinion one way or the other. But as far as I'm concerned, I just don't see the value. I hate to say it because it's such a good sander. I love it but it should be the same price or close to the same price as the Festool. Now, if you've used both of these sanders and you walked away with a different impression, let me know in the comments. I mean, I've got no skin in this game. I'm just trying to give the best advice that I can. And if you have a different opinion, let's hear it. I, I, I just think I'm one person here with one opinion and one set of experiences, and that's all I can really offer. Um, but what I don't want is for someone to who feels differently about this, I don't want you to see you know, my comments as trying to invalidate your experience. It's okay for us to have different opinions and to arrive at a different conclusion with these two sanders. Now, I can't go without giving a word of encouragement to people who watched this video and thought to themselves, you gotta be out of your damn mind, right? These are very expensive sanders. Let's be realistic. Most woodworkers are not gonna justify either one of these. And if that's you, don't feel bad about it. Lots of excellent furniture, top-notch furniture has been made with less expensive sanders. This is not gonna make or break your project. It's kind of a luxury to have a tool like this. Uh, and if you run a business where you know time is money, sometimes these sanders are worth the investment for that reason, because there's less downtime. You just get better results, uh, less fatigue in the hands, stuff like that. Better dust collection, you know, that's a thing these sanders will get you. Um, but if, you, if it's not in the budget, you're not interested in sanders like this, don't feel bad. I mean, ultimately people are using you know, this stuff, right? Hand planes, cabinet scrapers, they do their surfacing with that, and then they just do the finishing touches with the sanding. So there's a lot less dependency on sanding these days, especially amongst hobbyists. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this, let's call it a review, I guess, and hopefully it helps give you some information if you are in the market for either one of these, right? Thank you for watching, have a good one. Da -da 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 -da. We're done. Hey, thanks for sticking around. Come closer. Got a secret. I really only bought this sander for review purposes, which means I don't really need it, and I bet you could probably use it. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna give it away, and we're only gonna give it away to people who made it to the very end of the video. So there's a link down there. You wanna go there, just put your email in, and you are entered to win this. I don't really care how many people enter to win, so if someone posts this in the comments, I'm gonna delete it. And I'm not gonna post the link in the description, it's just in the video. So uh, you want a chance to win this thing, put your email in there and it could be yours.